The International Center on Nonviolent Conflict is in Washington, D.C. It's a private operating foundation uh, with an educational mission to educate, develop resources, share information about non-military strategies to fight oppression, which we refer to as nonviolent conflict or civil resistance. I think the most notable thing I've seen, well, two notable things, one is the demand for knowledge about how people can use nonviolent action, form movements, engage in widespread acts of nonviolent action to try to change things socially, politically, or economically in their society. But the demand for that knowledge has grown enormously every year. And the second thing is that the conventional wisdom about nonviolent action has changed a lot in the last 10 years. Anyone who said that nonviolent action was a major force in domestic and international affairs would really have a lot of people doubting them. And what I f find now is that if we make that claim, if we say that's true, it's met with a lot more acceptance. It's met with a lot more curiosity. Not, people don't say, oh, it can't, you know, that's not true. They say, explain how that's true. They're much more interested to learn more. The issues that people come to us about are everything from people wanting to organize for labor rights, women's rights, uh, fair and accountable government, uh, democratic rights, anti-corruption initiatives, environmental change, or excuse me, environmental preservation, even stuff about public safety. Um, so just a wide range of issues from all over the world. People are looking to make their voices heard, to assert themselves, to, and to hold power holders accountable. What they're really looking for is accountable government. Corruption, it's impossible to, to separate corruption from human rights at this point. Corruption, you know, has, I'm not an expert on it, but it seems to disproportionately affect the poor, because if the rich can pay to get by, then the poor can't. Um, it's the theft of public resources for private, for private interest, and it seems to be a ubiquitous problem and a widely shared grievance all over the world. It's incredibly difficult to deal with because conventional approaches to corruption are focused on institution building and finding various laws and institutional mechanisms to, you know, try to hold corrupt power holders accountable, but oftentimes, of course, the corrupt power holders, the whole corrupt system, is part of the top echelon of that society that then would be administering those institutions and upholding those laws. So there's a real need now to look at bottom-up approaches, not as something uh, that replaces top-down approaches, but something that is needed uh, and that they're complementary to each other.